ARP stands for Address Resolution Protocol. And this protocol is used to resolve IP addresses to MAC addresses. And MAC addresses are important because that is how devices on a network communicate to each other. So if computer A wanted to talk to computer B, it'll need to know computer B's MAC address. So every device on a network is going to have what's called a network interface card. And this network interface card is assigned a unique number called a MAC address. And this is what a MAC address looks like. Um, so if it's a computer, um, a laptop, your phone, your Xbox, your PlayStation, it's going to have a network interface card that will have a unique MAC address. So again, that's how computers or devices on a network talk to each other. So computer A wants to talk to computer B. It's going to send it to its MAC address, and then computer B will respond to computer A's MAC address. And that's where ARP comes in. Um, if it doesn't know uh, computer B's or computer A's MAC address, the ARP protocol is used to find a device's MAC address. So let's take a look at this on my network here and see how the ARP protocol um, is used. So I've got computer A and I want to send data to computer C, but I don't know its, its MAC address. Um, and computers and devices will have what's known as an ARP cache. And I've got a screenshot here of the ARP cache for my computer. And what the ARP cache is, is a lookup table. Um, so when I want to send data to a computer, I can look at the address and see if I have its MAC address so I know how to send data to it. If I don't, ARP will be used to find the MAC address. So what happens is, so computer A is going to say, who has, or who is, dot three. This is where I want to send uh, data to, but I need to know your MAC address. So computer A is going to send out uh, a broadcast to every device on the network. So the switch will send an ARP request or a broadcast request to every port on the switch. And computer B is going to discard it because it's not dot three. Uh, computer D is going to discard it because it's not dot three, but when the device uh, like dot three, it's going to be it's going to say me I'm dot three, and it's going to respond back with its MAC address. Um, so what happens next is the computer will update its ARP cache, and you can see here my computer now has an entry for dot three and its MAC address. So, so when I want to commun communicate to dot uh, computer C now, I know its MAC address. So when I send data, it's going to go directly to that computer instead of sending out a bunch of packets on the network. Um, and networking devices also will have, you know, its own uh, table. Because it's going to need to know. Okay, I, I'm, I'm getting a, I'm getting packets that need to go to, you know, this MAC address, but I don't. I need to know which port that's plugged into on the switch. So you can see I've got a screenshot here um, of the MAC address table on my Cisco switch that says that MAC address is on port three. So it knows the switch knows to forward those packets to port three that will get it to its uh, destination. So that's the basics of ARP and that's how it works on our network. So let's take a look now at the at the command to see how it works. So I've brought up the Windows command prompt and from here uh, you can I will type the command ARP A to view the ARP cache on my computer. 
and there'll be an ARP cache for every interface you have. I've got multiple interfaces, um, so that's why you see so many entries. But if I go up to my 192.168.40 uh, network, you can see here's the ARP entries um, for the, the IP addresses on my network. So here's that dot three address, and here is the MAC address for uh, computer C. So you can clear the ARP cache by doing a dash D, which will clear the entire ca uh, ARP cache, or you can do a specific computer or IP address. So I'll do dot three. Now, if I go back and look at my ARP, you'll see that dot three is gone. Um, so, so now let me pull up Wireshark and you'll see um, the actual network packets that go on behind the scenes of how ARP works. So here's a program called Wireshark. Again, this will just capture all of the network packets on my network. So what I'm going to do, let me start this capture. So I, on my computer, I have no, my computer does not know the MAC address of uh, computer C. So I will run a ping. So remember, it, since I don't have its MAC address, it's going to send out a broadcast saying, hey, who has, who has dot three to every, every device on the network. So let me stop this and you'll see. Here's my computer. It sent out a broadcast to the entire network, and that's just with these uh, FF colon FF. That is the broadcast address. So that sends out a broadcast to every uh, to every device on this 192.168.40 network. And then you can see here, dot three has responded um, to the ARP. So here's its source, its destination. It's saying uh, 192.168.40.3 is at, here's its MAC address. Once, once uh, the source computer has figured out its MAC address, you can see now I'm sending uh, data is being sent back and forth between the two computers. Uh, dot .2 is sending, then dot .3 is sending. So now computer A and computer C are able to send data back and forth. Uh, on, on a large network, I've got a small network, not much traffic. If you did this at home or on your corporate network with Wireshark, you'd probably see a ton of traffic going on. Um, so you can use Wireshark filters to uh, filter out all of the unwanted traffic. So you could come up here and just type ARP, and then here you'll see, you'll just see the ARP traffic. And I'll jump back to my ARP cache. And when we ran it before, you'll see there's no entry for the dot three. But now that we've sent out the broadcast and computer C has responded with its MAC address, you'll see the ARP cache is now updated. So if I were to run a capture again, and just run a ping. So now when I run a ping, you'll see it just does a ping. There's no ARP. That's because my computer has that MAC address in its ARP cache, so it doesn't need to send out that broadcast to find its MAC address. So that is the ARP protocol. Uh, pretty basic, but very important to, to use and just remember it's used to find the MAC address um, of a device on the network and that is how two devices on a network communicate is by the MAC address. So that's it for this video. Um, if you enjoyed it, please subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.